And welcome to part two of lecture 18, the Cauchy Riemann equations. This is the defining property of analytic functions, and we're going to look at and see it has a relationship to both the divergence and the curl. So Cauchy is the fine young gentleman on the top on the left, and Riemann is the one on the bottom on the left. And they devised these sets of equations for functions that are called analytic functions. And we're going to explore what these equations are, and we're going to see some of the usefulness of them in the coming lectures, particularly in the next lecture. So the idea of an analytic function is it's just a function of z, not of z bar. That means it's a function of this combination x plus iy, but not of x minus iy. And this simple restriction ends up producing lots of interesting properties. Analytic functions are like super well-behaved functions. They have an infinite number of derivatives. They can be expanded in a Taylor series expansion. They're continuous with all their derivatives, continuous and so forth. Any property that you really want your favorite function to have, most likely an analytic function will have that property. This is why mathematicians love them and physicists as well and why we study them a lot. So let's see how these properties arise. Uh, our one condition is our function is just a function of z, so it's a function of x plus i, y. So if I take the derivative with respect to x, I will get the derivative of f. If I take the derivative with respect to y, I get the derivative of f multiplied by i from the chain rule because there's an i, y in the definition of z. And now what we're going to do is we're going to break the function f into its real and its imaginary parts. Now those real parts can depend on both x and y as can the imaginary parts. And so what we find is df by dx will just be du by dx plus i dv by dx. And similarly, df by dy will be du by dy plus i dv by dy. But now we use the property that that's equal to i df dx. This is going to then give us some equalities that are going to be the cauchy riemann equations. So looking at the real part of these expressions, we immediately find du by dx has to equal dv by dy. And similarly, if we look at the imaginary parts, we find du by dy must equal minus dv by dx. And those two sets of equations are called the Cauchy-Riemann equations. We're going to rewrite them and express them as equations as something equals 0, and I get du by dx minus dv by dy is equal to 0, and I get du by dy plus dv by dx is equal to 0. Now, if I think of u as the x component of a vector field, and I think of v as the y component of a vector field, you can see this looks like a divergence on the left-hand side, the equation on the left, except it's got a minus sign instead of a plus sign. The divergence would have been dfx by dx plus dfy by dy. But here we have dfx by dx minus dfy by dy. Similarly, if we were to look at the z component of the curl, that would be dfx by dy minus dfy by dx. And here we have a plus sign. So these two Cauchy-Riemann equations are very reminiscent of del dot f equals 0 and del cross f equals 0, except the signs aren't quite right. And we're going to discuss this further in the next lecture where we really get into the details of exactly how this works. The reason why the signs aren't quite right is because of the issues associated with the I factors in the analytic functions. Now what we say is any function that satisfies these equations, which are called the Cauchy-Riemann equations, is an analytic function. And let's just take a look and check with some known functions to see whether or not they're analytic. So the first one we'll check is the exponential. I can write that as e to the x plus e to the i y. And so it's e to the x cosine y plus i e to the x sine y, which means u is e to the x cosine y, and v is e to the x sine y. Now let's plug into the Cauchy-Riemann equations. du by dx is just e to the x cosine y dv by dy is e to the x cosine y, and so indeed we see du by dx is equal to dv by dy. Similarly, du by dy is minus e to the x sine y, and that exactly equals dv by dx, which is just e to the x sine uh, minus dv by dx, which is minus e to the x times sine y. So this is an analytic function. Now let's take a look at what happens with the logarithm. 
So log of z, as you recall, is 1 half log of zz bar, so 1 half log x squared plus y squared, plus i tan inverse y over x. That means u is 1 half log x squared plus y squared, and v is equal to the arctangent of y over x. Now let's take derivatives. du by dx, I've got a 1 half. I have to put the x squared plus y squared in the denominator. Then I have to take the derivative of x squared with respect to x. That gives me a 2x. The 2 cancels the 1 half. I'm left with x over x squared plus y squared. If I take look at dv by dy, I have to remember, okay, that's an arctangent. That derivative will be 1 over 1 plus y over x squared. And then I have to take the derivative of y over x squared with respect to y. That gives me a 1 over x. And now when I put all of that together, I can immediately see that's equal to x over x squared plus y squared. So that cauchy riemann equation works. If I look at du by dy, you could very quickly see that that's going to just be y over x squared plus y squared. If I look at dv by dx, I'm going to get the 1 over 1 plus y over x squared. And then I have to take the derivative of y over x with respect to x. Well, that's going to give me a minus sign and then a y over x squared. And when all the dust settles, you can see that's equal to minus y over x squared plus y squared. And so I learned that du by dy is equal to minus dv by dx. So once again, this is an analytic function. And so what we have learned is there's a criterion called the cauchy riemann equations that allow us to determine whether or not a function is an analytic function. And while we haven't proved for you all of these great properties about analytic functions, I've told you that analytic functions have all these great properties. And we're going to be investigating something called Cauchy's theorem in the next lecture, which essentially says the integral of an analytic function over any closed path is equal to zero. That doesn't sound like it's that interesting of a result, but remember when we were looking at Stokes' theorem, those were functions, functions that had that integrals over path integrals were independent of the path ended up being functions that had special properties and so the fact that the analytic function satisfied that is called Cauchy's uh, theorem and we're going to find that that actually leads to a bunch of very interesting results when we slightly relax the condition of whether or not the function itself is an analytic function.